a uh, photo mechanic. We're, we're calling this a photo mechanic 101 edition, but I think whenever we talk to Jeff Bogan, our camera bits ambassador, it's very much a little bit more than 101 because Jeff is so slick. His workflow is so um, excellent. It ends up being a little bit more than just the basics for sure. In fact, yesterday he even said to me, uh, if you just use photo mechanic for calling, it's like driving a Ferrari, but only sit sitting in it because you like the seats. Uh, it's um, Jeff is a, a tremendous, tremendous workflow expert, and we're, we're lucky to have him as an ambassador, and we're lucky to share his knowledge with you here in this uh, webinar today. Um, I guess it's 11 o'clock now, so we we can get started, or you can wait a couple minutes if you want to see if anyone else is going to be around here. But Nick, I think out of out of respect for the uh, the folks that have joined us uh, at the top of the hour, um, you know, we could either wait or we could start uh, talking and adding value for those uh, for those let's folks. Di now. Let's dive in. It's recorded. We'll probably you know uh, post highlights at least or the whole thing at some point. We're not sure, um, but we'll, we'll post it. So since it's being recorded, yeah, we'll just dive right in. Okay. With that said, take it away, Jeff. Thank you very, very much. All right, my pleasure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend just a, a couple of minutes going through a little bit of a slide deck um, here. I promise that this is not a, a PowerPoint um, uh, presentation that you're going to be uh, looking at here. But uh, really, the idea is for those, you know, kind of the intended audience for this kind of uh, presentation or this this kind of discussion is more or less for those that have either never used photo mechanic or those that are, um, you know, kind of new to it and just scratching the surface. So really it's kind of getting started um, with, with photo mechanic. I would encourage you, this is a, um, I have my YouTube uh, channel and you can see that uh, I focus primarily on, on workflow. So uh, most of these are very small snippets on a particular technical aspect of using photo mechanic. So I would encourage you to uh, subscribe to that. I also teach, um, I teach workflow uh, workshops. There's uh, the large, you know, kind of the, the bigger getting started with photo mechanic, which is a two hour. And then I also do a more in-depth uh, streamline or advance your uh, advanced workflow with, um, uh, with photo mechanic, uh, which is uh, four hours. So this is kind of the content. I'm not going to be going into a, 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 this much detail. It's really, um, to kind of get you acquainted with what, uh, what it can do. So really, you know, there are a lot of people, I see it all the time on social media that talk about, um, you know, why should I use photo mechanic? I use Lightroom or, you know, bridge or what have you. Um, it is much, much, much faster to use photo mechanic for the specific purposes that uh, photo mechanic is built. And we'll touch on that. So when I'm doing a photo shoot, um, I will create my code replacements or hot codes, load them. These are optional because not every photo shoot requires these. Then I'll set my ingest dialogue, set my metadata template, which really just basically says what I'm going to be shooting that day. Take a quick test shot, put, you know, put it in and make sure I, you know, made no typos in my metadata, et cetera. Then go do my shoot, um, ingest, um, that's putting the card in the card reader. And then I call and rate, do any captioning metadata that I might need to do, crop it, and then I take it to my external editor. So, um, why do I use photo, me uh, photo mechanic? So, you know, big question. So my very first event, I've been a full-time photographer for several years now. Uh, my very first event was a national figure skating championships and I was under contract with Skate Canada to get uh, photos of every single skater and um, name the images after the skater, put it in a folder named after the skater. And I, I first looked at Photo Mechanic um, like a couple of weeks before the competition, I thought, ah, Lightroom does all this. I don't need to learn something new. I don't need the, the worry. Um, well, that took me three weeks. It took me three weeks to simply rename all the files and organize uh, all the folders. And that's three weeks I didn't get paid for, essentially. And that was working uh, late every night. So, you know, here's the example I'll go with. You take a thousand images, you know, it might be a typical, you know, football game that you're, you're taking a thousand or more images. And I don't think anyone would argue that it's not slow to deal with a thousand images in Lightroom or, or Photoshop. So now that I've, after I've introduced Photo Mechanic into my workflow, I still take those thousand images, but now I do the renaming, organization of the folders, metadata, culling, rating, cropping, and I whittle it down. I cull it down to, let's say for the sake of example, 200 keepers. So now I'm just taking 200 into Lightroom and therefore, you know, much faster. This whole process here of renaming and organizing and doing the metadata much, much faster in photo mechanic than it is. 
Now, I'm not going to necessarily read all of these things to you. You can, uh, you know, you can read just as well as I can, but um, there are some things in here. Um, you know, I, I guess the point that I want to drive across is, as I said, or, or Nick said earlier, what I was talking about, um, you know, using uh, photo mechanic just for calling. Yes, Lightroom does calling. You can do your calling in Lightroom. Photo mechanic much, much faster, but there's also other things that are absolute game changers. If you took photo mechanic away from me now, I would have to change my business um, because I can do a shoot. I did, did a photo shoot, uh, 250 um, portraits of uh, swim teams um, on Saturday. I'll sh quickly show you the result of that. Um, but uh, if I wasn't using photo mechanic, it would take me days of, um, you know, in post trying to identify the, uh, the athletes. Or I'd be using QR codes, barcodes, writing images down. I don't have to do any of that thanks to what I do with um, with Photo Mechanic. So again, you know, I'm going to create my code replacements or hot codes. Again, not necessary for every type of shoot. Um, I'll set my ingest dialog. I'll talk about what that is in a minute. Set my uh, metadata template. Um, again, you know, what am I shooting that day? Take a test picture and um, and then go and shoot. So I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail here on the variables and, and, and that sort of stuff. I think what's best to do now is just simply show you, um, do a little quick walkthrough um, here in, uh, in Photo Mechanic. So this is the contact sheet area. This is where you'll see the photographs. Down here, over here is the, uh, the navigator. So basically, um, you know, I see a lot of people get kind of confused with the concept of importing or bringing the images into photo mechanic because that's kind of the concept of uh, Lightroom. You import into Lightroom. You're not bringing anything into photo mechanic because photo mechanic is really just a, um, a browser, a file browser. So basically, if you look at what you have here in my finder window, that's what you're seeing here. So if I was to, you know, click on here, now you see the, um, you know, words, you don't see anything graphical here. But if I was to click on desktop um, here, now you're starting to see, now you see images. So you see the, it's a whole lot easier to browse and look at these pictures in this format than it is in this format. So really everything you see here is what you see, right? So hopefully I've got that, that concept out of the way. So now I get to look at some pictures here. I've obviously got images, or sorry, I've got files that are not, um, this is just my desktop, so not all of them are images, some of them are PDFs, etc. So you can see a bunch of things here. So now up here are my favorites. So what I've got is my, my list of favorite uh, folders, so that when I'm working, you know, I don't have to necessarily navigate through all of, you know, the depths of my uh, file structure here, folder structure, I can just simply look here. So now um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, quickly import some images. So let me show you how to do that. So when you start, um, we're gonna start with this demo setting. This is kind of what you see when you first start, when you first, you first call it up. So this is where I'm going to be um, in, ingesting the images from. This is what I'm gonna be doing with the images. I'm gonna put them in this case in a dated folder by definition. I'm going to store them in, well, I've, I've not defined it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify um, a location that I'm going to bring these images into. And I've got one called the master ingest folder. I'm going to put them there. I can specify a secondary location so I can have a redundant uh, path. Um, so I can have a, a second copy if I want. That's what I do when I'm um, traveling. I ingest my primary onto my SSD and my laptop and a secondary goes to an external SSD on my laptop. And then when I'm traveling, the laptop and the external SSD are in separate bags in case something gets lost, stolen, or damaged. So I come down here, and this is where I'm going to rename my files. So I'm going to rename my file Jeff Ogan underscore, and then I'm going to use this thing called a variable, um, which is the event. So I'm going to say apply a metadata template here. So let's look at that metadata template clear it so this is what you'd start with nice blank slate so you've got no information in here this is where you put in all your image rights your copyright information i'm going to click on this lightning bolt thing um, down here it's, and, and pull up what's called a snapshot you can see i've got you know a couple of dozen different uh, snapshots here 
let's say start with this one. So there's your very basic one. I've got my name owner and I've got, the, and I don't bother putting in 2023 because January 1st of 2024, I know I'm gonna to forget to change it. So I just use the year variable. We'll pull up 2024 starting January 1st. So I pull in this information and I've put up here, remember I said the event variable. So that's it right there. Um, I'm pulling in the event uh, name. And in my template, I said, forgot to change the ITPC template because if I go back now and I'm gonna um, go start with this one, it's gonna create a folder for me that uses the date. I use date sort dash because I like year, day, um, with dashes in between, makes it a little easier to, to uh, view the date. And then the event, remember the event is right here. So I'm gonna call this, what, what should we call it? Camera, bits, demo, um, October, what's the date? 18. Now I'm gonna call it session one because we know the date will be on there already. So we're gonna call that, and I'm in, as you can see, I've got all of my, my favorite, you know, the ones that I've done here. I, you know, I'm not at the UW pack. So I can put in, you know, in for, I'm gonna just call it Jeff's uh, house. So there we go. So there's all my metadata template, um, all my metadata. So all of that is gonna be applied to the images that I ingest. So let's take a quick look. Um, so I'm gonna close that. I'm gonna go do my photo shoot now, and then I'm gonna put my card in the card reader and let's watch what, whoops, let me just check. I've got incremental. I just wanna make sure I have all my settings. There we go. Card in the card reader. I don't need to do anything else. It just starts pulling the images in and don't need those to go into, um, into Lightroom. So now, so these are some sample images that I had. So now let's take a look at the files. They're called Jeff Ogan camera bits demo session, and then the sequence number. So there you go. You see that we renamed the files when we ingested it and they're sitting in a folder called 2023-0816. That's today's date camera bits demo session. And if I go and look at now the metadata, um, sorry, here, yeah, here's the ITPC stuff. If I double click on it, I now start to see all the metadata in terms of how I, like what I shot the image with. All of this is customizable. So I see I shot this at uh, four thousandth of a second at f2.8. And if I, so the, the, the thing that uh, seems to be the most popular in terms of the first function being used in uh, photo mechanic, let me just make this a little bigger is culling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this first image and then I'm going to put my, um, the way I do it is I do numbers one to five um, and those do uh, maintain um, when you bring them into Lightroom. I'm going to put my finger on the one key and the right arrow key. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give this a one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, 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 one, 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 et cetera. And I can literally go through them this quickly. This one, I'm going to give a one. That's probably the very first sports image I ever took. That's my son, probably 26 years ago. So there's my, so I'm gonna give some ones, zero, zero, et cetera. So there you go. I've gone through and you see some one stars here. So now what I wanna do is uh, let's say I've done, I've gone through that. I'm gonna now hide the zeros. So I'm only looking at the ones that are one or above. And you see some of them have twos. That's because I marked those in camera. So I mark those as a two in camera, um, just, you know, I'm, I'm on the field and I'm shooting and I thought, you know, that's a particularly good uh, image. I want to mark that to make sure that it comes in. So let's say I want to take this one. I want to, you know, I really like that. I want to sur surface that up to social media. So in my, my method, I give that a three. I'm going to hide my twos. There you go. And here are kind of the top rated ones. So if I wanted, I could come in here now and I can crop this. There you go. Now let's take a look at it full screen. There you go. So that's not how I would crop that image, but that's just an example of how it can be done. We can do the same thing here. We can crop. You can see that that's a constrained crop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change my settings and I'm going to go normal crop. So that allows me to do whatever, whatever crop I want. And this again, it's carried over into Lightroom. So now what I'm gonna do, just for the sake of example, let's uh, let's bring back some of the two so we have a few more. So I'm gonna take these images. Uh, let's just take these. And now for me to bring them into Lightroom, I'm gonna simply drag and drop it onto the Lightroom icon. 
and I'm going to put them into, uh, I'll just put them into swimming. I'm, I'm not going to, well, let's, let's do it right. So I'm going to create a new, um, and we're going to call it camera bits. Actually, I didn't even need to do that. What I could have done, I'm going to come up to 2023 and then I'm going to say into, um, yeah, by original folders. There we go. So now I'm going to import. You see that all the pictures are there from that uh, particular gallery, but only the ones that I had highlighted or selected are being brought in. So I come here, import, it's gonna take us, you know, this is why you don't wanna be bringing 85,000 images into Lightroom. And now you see that the crops that I made are here. And if I go back, there's the original, like that's the original uh, image. So it's non-destructive. So there you go. I can do my um, uh, tuning of the image or the editing of the image. And then now export these, publish these out. Uh, for example, I put them on my Smug Mug website. How are we doing on time? So we're about 20 minutes in. So I've kind of run through my very quick, um, quick demo on how I use it from kind of the, the, the very basic piece. Are there any questions? Are there any other things that you want to see me do here? Just you can put questions. You can put your questions in the chat or unmute yourself. It's, it's up to you. Yeah. By all means, just um, just ask your questions away. Right. Either this is uh, clear as milk, or I'm doing a <laughs> fantastic job of explaining it. So I want to show you just you know the the example again. You know you you buy the Ferrari because you just like the seats. Yeah, they may have great seats, but there's just so much more that you can do with it. So let me show you. Um, let me show you an example of well, from the photo shoot that I did on uh, on Saturday. So using photo mechanic, um, here you go. So there, you know, you see up in the favorites under that master sync ingest uh, folder. So that was that was what we just uh, ingested. Now these are sample images that were sitting on my uh, on my memory card. Um, but what I want to do is show you um, the photo shoot that I did on Saturday. So there's the date: Cobra Swim Club portraits. Now you see under age group A, see all these kids. So each kid has an individual, like has their own folder. So let's go in. I know I can use uh, this one. I'm going to show Abby. And I know I have permission to show Abby's pictures. Um, so here is a folder. The file name is Jeff Ogan, Abby Clark, and then the image number. And then the folder name is Abby Clark. So if I go in here and look at the metadata, it was photographed at the McMurchie pool. It's a Cobra Swim Club portraits, Brampton, that's the city. Abby Clark, athlete, senior A, that's the squad she's on, swimmer, swimming, sports. And then you see person shown. I even have portrait of a Cobra Swim Club athlete in the alt text, which is good for SEO. Featured org, all of that. And then you see all of my copyright information, location, all of that was done automatically. I have never typed Abby's name. All of this was given to me as uh, the roster from the club. Um, I brought it into a spreadsheet and then I pointed photo mechanic. I said, look at this spreadsheet when you're ingesting the images and it automatically created the um, folders. So age group A, B, et cetera. And then within each of those squads are all the photos. And I did not type a single one of these names. You can see why when I'm shooting 85,000 images and, and literally several hundred athletes over, over a four day competition, why it would take three days just to uh, retype the name and, and create the folder and name the folder and move the images over and, and do all of that work. I'm strategically lazy. I don't want to do any work that I don't have to do. So I got the club to send me the spreadsheet with the names with, and the, the associated squad that they're on. Tell photo mechanic, this is what I'm doing and this is the result. So, you know, if I come in here, uh, let's see, age group A. Let's see, we had some uh, some cute swimmers. There we go. So, you know, now we go here. There's Olivia. That was the, probably the best bathing suit. Um, so I can click on this, hit P to show me the full, give me the F, and there you go. That's straight out of the camera. I should have had her move over a little bit. You can see one of the lights uh, behind her. But um, so, oh, I had, in this case, I had Olivia. We, we, we posed for some pictures and then while she changed and put her cap and goggles on, sprayed her down with, uh, with water, um, we, we photographed someone else. But these show up because of how I use photo mechanic and what I do in camera. Um, we have all of Olivia's pictures uh, together. And if I come in here, I can actually go and I can look at images of all the kids. And again, sometimes I photographed, like I photographed this girl 
And then she would, or let's see, do we have another example? There's Olivia. So there's Olivia and by capture time, you see that they're separated, right? There's Olivia Chow here and then there's Olivia. So we photograph this, uh, this kid in between. So I come up here and I just say, um, show me by uh, file name. So I'm not looking at capture time now. So I've got all of Olivia's pictures together. Um, here the flash didn't fire proper, one of the strobes didn't fire properly. But here you get a sense of how easy this is. No QR codes, no barcodes, um, no writing images, no uh, writing image numbers down. Um, all I simply did was uh, photograph how I do it is each individual um, athlete goes into a specific storage folder in camera as I shoot. And then photo mechanics says everyone in, you know, folder uh, 215, that's Olivia Chow. So that is part of the power. Um, and this is, uh, you know, that's that's part of the advantage. If I want to come in here and change some of, here, so I'm going to click here, look at the metadata. If I wanted to add additional metadata, um, you know, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, I can actually, um, uh, I can save that. I can copy it over to others. I can take the um, snapshot of the metadata that I've applied there and say, apply that to all of Olivia's pictures by pasting it. There you go. I'm not going to do it just as an example, but um, that's just a little bit of the power. Um, and again, if I want to take this particular image, maybe I want to crop it. It's faster to crop here than in Lightroom. I take this picture and I drop that into uh, Lightroom. Off you go. And there now, this is the familiar um, interface that you see. So after I did the photo shoot for um, the Cobras, as it was tearing down the equipment, this was a couple of years ago now, but as I was tearing down the equipment, um, the manager of the club said, you know, when do we get to see these pictures? And I said, well, they're already on the website. How is that? So I literally, I go upload to Smug Mug, and then you see that it's going into 2023 swimming, Cobra, unedited, just so they can view them uh, with watermarks. And then I point to whichever, um, I'm just going to, let's say, for example, I'm going to put this in the, the board, the board of directors there. For, and I hit send. There you go. Up it goes. So when I'm shooting for, um, when I'm shooting for Golf Canada or, you know, yeah, working with the PGA Tour, I can take a picture of a golfer teeing off and I can have it captioned, edited, um, cropped, um, and sent to Dropbox, Photo Shelter, Smug Mug, which is my website, and Twitter before the person hits their second shot. That's how fast this is. Now, are there any questions? We're about 27 after, so. Although I think uh, Twitter no longer is a possibility due but to yeah, the changes in there. <laughs> I've actually deleted all my footprint from that, uh, that company. I, I, I was speaking in past tense before Elon, uh, before Elon got involved. <laughs> So there any, are there any questions on this? Hopefully I've been able to give a little bit of a flavor on, um, on using this. So, well, let, let's, well, let me show one more thing. And if I'm going to come here and we go Cobra, there we go. So there's, there's Olivia. Um, you know, here's, here's where to look at the pictures and now here are the unedited images. So these are the ones there should be on the board. There you go. There's the one that, uh, that we pushed up as part of the demonstration. I'm going to organize the gallery. This is my Smug Mug website. I'm going to come in here and delete that because she's not part of the board. And that literally is how, when these pictures go straight up and then they pick from, uh, from these images, which ones they want uh, to be edited. And then so, so it's just a couple of keystrokes to, uh, to send yep. these up to the website. Any questions, observations, learnings? And the, uh, when you get the, like the color coded folders in photo mechanic, that's just comes from, um, being on Mac OS. You do that through Mac OS. You assign a color to the folder and photo mechanic picks that up. Is that correct? That's correct. So if I want, yeah. you know, receipts here, for example, this is, this is a Mac thing. It's not a photo mechanic thing. So I, I, um, was teaching a workshop and somebody was asking me how to do that. And she used windows and, oh. um, and she, she was so bummed. Um, next time I talked to her, she had bought a new computer and it was a Mac. <laughs> just saw the value and anyway, this is, this is just me organizing, right? After I upload the images, the unedited, I changed it to yellow. And then once I'm done, I've, you know, delivered all the selected images to the client. I'll change it to green. And if I have a problem and I have to come back to it, I'll change it to red. 
That's such a good idea. It's I need just, to start doing that. Yeah. So, you know, like come in here, go like this, you know, kind of line it up a bit. That's kind of how I typically crop it. And then, you know, I could give this a one. Um, so I use the one to five method of uh, rating. So like I could give this a one star or I could give it um, a red. As long as I live, I will never remember if red, green, blue, purple, yellow, like which is better than, than which. So I use the one to five method. And then uh, that translates over to, um, to Lightroom. So I will, you know, the stars that I assign to the images here are also the stars that are assigned when you bring the images into Lightroom. And, uh, there's there a questions? comment in the, in the chat, I guess uh, Jay Hansen said they had to take a phone call, but would love a more in-depth session someday. I think that's a good uh, segue and believe it. We have a, we do have a follow-up in a couple of weeks. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, there's, um, you know, there, there's two things. There's the, the very condensed um, overview that I'm doing like today and with, uh, with camera bits. If you're interested in getting in depth, I do do, um, uh, the, so the getting started one is that's the two hours. So that's, uh, 149 Canadian and 249 Canadian. This is the one I've, I've had photographers from Getty, PGA tour, Montreal Canadians, uh, other NHL teams. So I've actually done work with the PGA tour, um, and, and some NHL teams, they've been through my workshop. Um, so there's, you know, so there's some value in this. So this is very specific to your individual workflow. There's, there's Mick. And then, you know, if you really want to, you know, bear down, I do one-on-one, -on -one, um, training as well. Sorry. That's my, my commercial plug. <laughs> Right, but, and, but we will be doing, I guess we're calling it a 201 session. 201. Yeah, uh, so that'll get yeah. into a little bit more detail on, like, how I'm using hot codes to do that example that I showed about the, the swim club. Right. Get into more detail about that. The, the hot, cards, hot codes are how, how he's getting metadata into these files in a very automated way. It's very, very yeah. impressive. So, you know, all of, all of this, I do my shoot. I have all my, you know, everything lined up for me. So, you know, I... If I want to, um, you know, deal with, you know, these pictures, a parent picks this one, I come in, I do the crop, and then I put it into Lightroom, do the final edit, and then deliver it um, on, the, on, my, on my website. So I spend a lot less time doing the kind of computer work um, and, uh, and, and a lot more time shooting and, and delivering. Well, thank you very much for the, having time to uh, come and speak with us today. This was, uh, this was a treat as usual. Uh, my pleasure. I'm going to turn the, uh, where is it? Where is it? Uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Where'd it go? Here you go. Stop sharing. There we go. And uh, yeah, so it didn't seem there were a lot of questions, um, but if you do have any in the future, if you need to uh, get in touch with us at Camera Bits, you can certainly go to uh, camerabits.com and uh, click on the uh, uh, support link. Uh, you can contact us, send us an email. We're happy to uh, explain any of this uh, we can. Um, we also have a knowledge base there with uh, articles and other videos uh, going over some of the basic uh, uh, ways to get started with Photo Mechanic. Um, and as you know, Jeff Bogan, is he, he showed you his website. If you want to get in contact with him, uh, I believe that was the best way to do that. It's just jeffbogan.com. Is that correct? Uh, it's jeffbogan.photography.com. Jeff Bogan, excuse me. Pardon me. My mistake. Actually, they both work. I, Jeff Bogan oh, okay. redirects to Jeff Bogan Photography. <laughs> All right. Well, that's... Uh, you know that's a fantastic resource, and uh, I hope uh, some people take you up on some of the some of the workshops you have scheduled. Because as I said, the, Jeff does things that no one else is doing with photo mechanic, and he has um, he just has a tremendous not only tremendous eye for photography, but a tremendous um, knack for this workflow stuff. He he can really seem to automate uh, things that even I hadn't thought about, and um, I've heard such rave reviews. So it's uh, it's always always a treasure. Thank you very much, Jeff, for for doing this. My pleasure. All right, I think with that, we'll uh, probably uh, wrap this up. Um, thank you very much for John Keel, a photo mechanic tech who was here to uh, keep an eye on things. It looks like we didn't have a lot to do, but thank you, John. And uh, yeah, with that, have a good uh, rest of your day, everyone. Get out there, happy photographing, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks for uh, uh, a 201 session with Jeff again. See you then.